Quick disclaimer. This is all conjecture based on rumors combined with speculative imagination. There are very few real facts here, as most of what we know is speculative, but figure I'd get it out of the way. You don't need me to tell you that AMD's Fusion and APU products have been sort of a mixed bag. On one hand, they can offer incredible value for those wanting to play games on low settings or in building a cheap but highly capable home theater PC. On the other hand, they often miss the target because of delays or because spending a little more money will get you something much, much better. AMD's current main project is the Zen CPU architecture, which is still allegedly on track for 2016. But rumors are pointing to a 2017 release, unfortunately. If AMD manages to survive until its release, we should see it in both CPU and APU form. AMD has a lot on their plate, and they need to deliver. If they don't, it'll likely be AMD's final architecture driving the final nail into a coffin that has been waiting around for burial since 2006. Purchasing ATI to realize the APU dream has cost them dearly. Continuous delays, compounded by layoffs, reducing the workforce because of financial losses means AMD is worth a fraction of what they were at their peak in the mid-2000s. In its APU form, here's what Zen needs to get right. The Zen CPU core itself has to be a truly substantial improvement over the bulldozer-derived module architecture AMD has fielded the past four years. Specifically, it has to be a huge improvement over the individual integer cores that come packed to, to a module. Rumors have been that AMD is targeting more recent Intel architectures such as Haswell as a baseline. It is known, however, that Zen will be AVX2 capable, so expect a huge jump over Haswell in floating point performance. Second, Intel has the best CPU integrated graphics processor out there with GT4e, also known as Iris Pro Graphics 580. While AMD doesn't necessarily need the best or the fastest, they need the ultimate value. Unfortunately, Intel just doesn't stand around, and AMD has to counter Intel's entire line of IGPs to stay competitive. Whether they target GT4e or not, AMD needs to fix its bandwidth problems. The GCN architecture in AMD's past three generations of GPUs and its Kaveri APUs is very bandwidth hungry. In an APU, it's sharing that bandwidth with CPU cores making its performance very dependent on the kind of RAM it's equipped with, possibly making a computer all that more expensive. Moving to DDR4 memory only does so much, especially if AMD is going to increase the amounts of graphics processing resources. AMD could address this in a number of ways. They could change the APU cache system by integrating a huge amount of L3, which will benefit both the x86 cores and the graphics array. They could also increase the number of memory channels depending on the platform. AMD could also take a similar approach to Intel's eDRAM solution, but using high bandwidth memory instead. AMD also needs to use a new architecture with Zen. It's possible AMD will be rolling out a new GPU architecture to succeed GCN in 2016. Like with Nvidia's Maxwell, improving the shader cache system will highly mitigate the bandwidth needs for the graphics array. It's quite impressive how well the GTX 950 and 960 do with a 128-bit memory bus using GDDR5 memory. The graphics array is by far the most bandwidth dependent, and going this last route also benefits AMD's dedicated GPUs too, but it's likely we'll see a combination of solutions which benefits the entire APU. From a computational standpoint, AMD needs to step up their game in making the graphics and CPU cores a more cohesive unit. The heterogeneous computing dream has yet to come to fruition, but nailing it down will make Zen APUs all that more attractive for scientific and server computing that can continuously targets floating point performance as a crucial need. GPGPU could finally become what it's always been envisioned to be, a practical means of exploiting the high floating point performance of GPUs. AMD could take a huge bite out of both Nvidia and Intel in certain server segments that need both x86 and GPGPU capabilities. Importantly, AMD will be producing Zen on either 16 or 14 nanometer manufacturing processes to reduce transistor size. It will make it possible to pack twice as much onto the same die space as they could with 28 nanometer which AMD has been stuck on for three years. However, Intel is already on its way to 10 nanometer. Designing an efficient and profitable process for both high clock x86 cores and high clock graphics cores is a big challenge. Size isn't everything though, as chemistry is just as important for meeting voltage, power, and thermal design goals in processor manufacturing. AMD's efforts working with TSMC and Global Foundries have yielded some impressive results, even while being stuck on 28 nanometer. But in the end, a whole new process is the only way forward in order to stay competitive. 
So for mid to late 2016, a game-changing desktop APU in my opinion would be as so. Be manufactured on a 16 nanometer process, have 4 Zen cores running at about 3.5 gigahertz, 20 next generation compute units with 64 stream processors each for a total of 1024 at about 1 gigahertz, 2 gigabytes with a 1024 bit stack of version 2 high bandwidth memory, 2 DDR4 memory channels, in a TDP of no more than 95 watts. Get it under $200 and it could be a huge hit. Ideally such a large and powerful APU would have the HBM2 stack, but it could be optional like EDRAM is with Intel's IGPs. 2GB of HBM2 would be enough to address most games at 1080p resolutions. A properly designed driver could handle the data shifting from main memory to HBM2, reducing the actual amount of HBM2 needed. The total idea here is to give us better than PS4 graphics performance at an excellent price for low-end gaming machines and huge amounts of performance for server and scientific computing systems. Lower clocked versions can make their way into laptops with or without the HBM2. And this one APU design would be the basis for die harvested 3 core and 768 stream processor die models to boost usable yields as already commonly practiced by AMD and Nvidia. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below on what you think Zen will be and if it'll be successful or the doom of AMD. And as always, hit that like button if you enjoyed this, subscribe for more future topics on computing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.